The A1, Britain's longest road. Right, so this is the A1, mate. Moving millions of us every year. Here we go. Yep, Britain's longest road. Just get us to the A1. I'm trying. That's all I want out of life. But not all journeys go to plan. 15 minutes and it was totally obliterated. That was incredible, the distance it's actually travelled into the field. Thankfully, 24 hours a day... Nine vehicles and an LGV over. ..there's an army of people. The network is just gridlocked. ..protecting us from danger. Hey, fella, is anybody injured? Something's not right. People drive on the A1 and think it's a racetrack. They keep Britain's most iconic road on the move. Most glamorous part of being a traffic officer sweeping the streets. <laughs> Coming up... The runaway car... Is anybody injured? ..that's plunged down a 20-foot embankment. The occupant is out of vehicle from pain and the chest pain's over. Scottish police target dangerous drivers. Still at it, perfect. On their mobile phones. His manner of driving indicates that he's not paying full attention. <laughs> and the Geordie giant veg growers. Gonna make sure that he's nice and safe for his trip. Getting in a stew on the A1. We're not gonna make this. We are running very near. I'm out. starting to get a sweat on. At around 400 miles long, and with over 10,000 incidents a year for the team of Highways England traffic officers patrolling this giant road, they never know what the day will bring. It's early morning, and in County Durham, Peter Senior and Scott Wilson right. are heading out on patrol along the 60 miles of the A1 that they cover. Down the road, commuters on the number 11 bus are about to get the shock of their lives. As the bus was stopping to pick up more passengers, a car hurtles past, narrowly missing pedestrians before careering across a roundabout and disappearing from view. Distressed passengers and the stunned bus driver rush to see if anyone's hurt. By complete coincidence, Peter and Scott have just driven past the car at the bottom of an embankment on the A1. We've got a car behind the barrier. It looks like it's came off the roundabout at the top and down the verge. As they head to the accident, it's been a terrifying near miss for the bus passengers and the pedestrians. Some embankment that's come down, isn't it? I need to go in the right and then down. Yeah, and round the roundabout, and then you stop where you can stop. There's the car down there. Scott, I'm going to have to go down to assess it. A concrete barrier has stopped the car from careering onto the A1. Is anybody injured? Have you got an ambulance en route? Yes. Two off-duty police officers who witnessed the whole incident are looking after the driver. What's the injuries? Is it... Did you actually see it come off? They were front of the lights. And he just shot past you and straight over. The barrier, the barrier the car. Yeah, came over the barrier from Lobley Hill roundabout. It's uh, smashed against the concrete barrier at the bottom. The occupant is out of vehicle. He's sitting on the grass, breathing conscious, in his 50s, complaining and the chest pain's over. Yeah. How are you feeling now? I'm, I'm feeling all right, yeah. Are you feeling sick at all? Or just a bit in shock? You're very lucky, mate. Thankfully, within minutes, help is on the horizon. Hotel Alpha from Charlie Echo 41. We've now got ambulance and police on scene. Over. Hello, fella. How are you feeling? I know you're going to be in quite a, a bit of shock at the moment. Have you got any pain in the centre of your neck? Can I just have a quick feel? Can you remember rolling down the bank? Yeah, I can remember that. Can you remember? The airbags deploying. 
No, not bad. No. Do you think your head has hit the windscreen at all? It doesn't look like it. No. The driver, Gary Sibold, has had a miraculous escape. But he's trapped between the busy A1 and a 20-foot embankment, so getting him to hospital isn't going to be easy. Gary, can you remember what happened at all, pal? Yeah, I want to go from your brakes and I couldn't feel it. I couldn't feel it. I right. Don't, I don't know whether my shoes slipped off or something. Right. It'll be for the police to investigate how Gary lost control of his car. What's not in doubt is that the barrier stopped an already terrifying episode, becoming a huge pileup on the A1. And with more than 800 incidents a year where vehicles crash into central reservations, more and more of these life-saving structures are being built on Britain's motorways. On the A1 in North Yorkshire, one of the companies at the centre of the drive towards more concrete is run by Joe Rucroft. The concrete step barrier that we're putting in at the moment has been proven to stop crossover accidents. Concrete can contain vehicles weighing up to 13 tonnes. While any car over one and a half tonnes will crash through a steel barrier. I actually know somebody who was involved in a crossover accident. Uh, he was driving down the M6 and all of a sudden there was an Arctic on his side coming towards him. Couldn't do anything about it, he just ran into it. He spent some time in hospital. Um, other people aren't so lucky, but I've never known anybody get through a concrete barrier. Today, Joe and his team need to lay more than 200 metres of the life-saving structure. It's very much a family business. My nephew, who's driving the machine at the moment, he's all right, yeah, he's a good lad. He's a bit of a petrol head. I can control these vibrators here and they push it out the back of the machine here. How Sam operates all depends on the concrete mix. If you start with wet concrete, you'll obviously have them really low because the, the force that that generates in there pushes quite a lot. So if it's really wet, it'll just fire it out and it'll all fall down and you don't want it to fall down. As Sam's machine creates the barrier, the rest of the team work behind him. We're concrete finishers. We just fought it with these steel floats. We just make it look nice. We deserve more money and all that, really, because we do work hard, but... <laughs> See, if I don't do my job well up there, then the wall won't look as good, and the people behind, they won't be happy, and they'll throw the floats at me, as they always say. So I've got to make it come out the back of the machine as best as it can, which it's all right if the concrete's all right, but our job is all about the concrete. If the concrete comes wrong, then we're having a bad day. There'll be around 16 deliveries of concrete today. That's almost 216 tonnes. To the same batch as yesterday. But there is a problem with the latest mix. Whatever it's slumping out, it's too wet. At the moment, the concrete is wrong and it's wet, so that's why the concrete truck sat there waiting, and we've got 200 and odd metres sat in front of us that we can't lift. So this is the next truck that's turned up. Hopefully the slump is getting up now to have a look. Well, officially, I'm a plant and field technician, but the unofficial title is slumpy. And that's what I do, slump the concrete. It's a measure of workability. Did you like building sandcastles when you were a kid? <laughs> He'll probably make a sign at Joe, and I've got a feeling he's saying wetter, which isn't a good thing. And the way Joe's walking back, I've got a feeling it is wetter. I suggest we send them back. I don't think they're going to dry up. Send them back. Gosh, yeah, send them back. For the team, the job's ground to a halt. Go put a kettle on. <laughs> Concrete will turn up. And it could be a long wait until this section of the A1 gets its life-saving upgrade. 40 miles north in Newcastle, two green-fingered friends have a big reason to make a long journey down to Worcestershire. All right, mate. How are we doing? Spot on. In fact, they have lots of huge reasons. Looking forward to seeing how big these onions are. Not as big as mine.
Gary Cooper and Mark Shepard are entering the UK Giant Vegetable Championship. And this afternoon, they're on Gary's allotment just off the A1, preparing his entries ahead of tomorrow's trip. I'll say £10 for... I reckon 11 5 Gary and Mark will be rivals when it comes to seeing who has the biggest. As long as you don't drop it, a yeah. bit of sabotage won't go, go on <laughs> But in some ways, they're rooting for each other. 11, 11 and a half. That's good, that. That's a pound over what I thought. I got into growing massive vegetables because there was an old gentleman used to get into the social club I used to go for a pint every now and then, and he said that us young lads would never be able to grow vegetables like them. So uh, the competitive side of us took over. While Gary's a relative new kid on the giant vegetable growing block. They look good, them, Gary. You must be impressed with them. Uh, well, that one's looking huge. Mark really knows his onions. My granddad got us involved in, in growing when I, was, when I was about five years old and uh, it just stemmed from there. Just thought, I think you've just got a natural bit. talent for it, you, though. You've got it grown, I'll give you that. Not yeah. as good as me, though, because I think I beat you with the onions, haven't I? No. I'm excited to see how big my marrows are, like. We'll get the Mickey took out all the time. On a daily basis. But when they see the huge fit, everyone's got... It's got the wow factor, yeah. everyone. Like, wow, look at that! If people look can take that. the Mickey all they want, but if, at the end of the day, can you grow one of those? I doubt it. I want it over 50. It's an obsession. You don't realise how obsessed you get with it. And you're down here where you could be at home or out with your family having a meal and stuff like that. You're at the allotment, kissing and cuddling your onions instead of your children. And that's what you're doing <laughs> anyway. <laughs> and the vegetables need extra special love and attention before the long journey. Watch me babies. Make sure they're tucked away. <laughs> Gary's trying to find safe places for his veg in and around Mark's plastering gear. Every leaf I lose is more weight and everything depends on the weight. And he's in a bit of a pickle. Move the cabbage a bit further in, it can go in. It, no, because it's snapping the leaves off. I've already lost one there. This is stressful. Just, I just don't want to lose any more leaves. That's it? Yeah, probably. Hi. I am, are you? Yeah. Spot on. The next morning, show day. And in his own veritable vegetable paradise, Mark's sizing up his chances. It's not the biggest of cucumbers, but I'm only sure what you've got. But Mark's highest hopes aren't for his large veg. Morning. Morning. How are you doing? Spot on. See, show day's arrived, eh? Yeah. Did you sleep all right last night? I didn't sleep a wink. The Malvern Autumn Show also has a floristry competition. Check that one out. Looks good, doesn't it? Beautiful. The dahlias are my favourite flower. I do have a bit of an obsession with dahlias. They look perfect, especially when they're on the show bench, but they do, they do keep in a vase at home, so it does keep, keep my wife happy as well. Mark's feeling confident about his dahlias, but he knows the 250-mile trip is a precarious one. When they're in transport, the flowers need to be kept apart, because if they touch like that on the way down, the petals are going to end up damaging and you can get marking on the petals and when the, when the judges go around, they can see that. So the likely lads are ready to head south for their biggest competition yet. The tension's growing now, isn't it? I'm happy with the, the white canora challenger there. Don't touch him. <laughs> Before setting off, a quick leak. It's not as big as what I'd like it to be, but it hasn't been a very good year for leaks. None of the other veg are going to argue when a massive marrow is riding shotgun. Gonna make sure that he's nice and safe for his trip. The mouth in the marrow. Right, that's it. Let's go. And Mark, Gary and Malvin are soon on the A1 with their precious competition cargo. We're on the move, Malvin. We're on the move. I'll be driving a little bit slower than the speed limit, just to keep equal distance between the, the car in front. I don't want to get too close and do any heavy braking because that could be catastrophic. But the going can't be too slow. 
If we get stuck in a traffic jam, the flowers are gonna wilt, the veg is gonna start stinking. The temperature's now up to 19 degrees, so the back of the van is gonna get really hot really quick. The flowers and the veg will deteriorate very, very quick, which can be a major problem. Not that they needed it as regular travellers on the A1, but there's an early reminder of just how unpredictable this busy northeast section can be. How long do you think this tail bag is? Uh, I reckon 10 miles. 10 mile. Tell you what, though, if we got stuck in that on the way down to Malvern, it would be a no disaster. Yeah. With 250 miles before the deadline for show entry, all they can do is keep their green fingers well and truly crossed. Back in Tyne and Weir, traffic officers Scott Wilson and Peter Senior... I'll see if there's any signs we can get set prior to here. ...are dealing with the aftermath of a runaway car, which has rolled down an embankment and been brought to a halt right by the A1. Paramedics need to take the driver, Gary Sibold, to hospital, but the rescue isn't going to be straightforward. 4-1 police have got a nearby unit about to put a lane one closure on the main carriageway so they can get the casualty over the barrier uh, because they're going to be unable to get him back up the steep embankment. With no hard shoulder, traffic police have closed lane one, so the ambulance can pull up right next to Gary. Don't believe the driver's got any serious injuries, which, you know, taking into account the fact that some assaulted down an embankment, I think he's getting out quite lightly, really. The morning commuters have also had a fortunate escape. It's lucky it's what hasn't went down at the, uh, the carriageway. I was just going to say the same to you. It's ugly it's a concrete barrier <laughs> section because they take a lot more weight. Had it been an old metal arm yeah. pole, you, you query whether it would have held it. Oh, definitely. With paramedics happy Gary can be moved, he's carefully lifted over the barrier that probably saved his life. For one, police are just waiting for this ambulance to leave scene and they will get the main carriageway fully open so far. Now that Gary is on his way to hospital, the A1 can get moving again. It's still going to take an hour or so before traffic fully gets back to normal. It's caused such a backlog. There's several miles of tailback now because of this. Now the priority for Peter and the team is to remove the car without causing any further delays to the A1. We're right in the middle of rush hour now. It's going to be a complicated recovery. It's probably going to be... I'd rather just get the A1 open and wait till 11 o'clock or something. I mean, right. It's never a good time, really, is it? So, I mean, Once we'll leave it for we'll now. We'll if you we'll need we'll us back later yeah, for recovery, I mean, just give closure, us a shout. We'll put the closure in, it's right. a good issue. The team decide to wait until rush hour has cleared. And I'm just going to climb Everest to get back to our car. It's only now, with dawn breaking, that Peter can see how the car ended up in this bizarre position. It came down this hill here, out of control, came straight over the junction and struck the barrier there. So probably these deeper indentations is where the car's been rolling head over heels and uh, came to settle at the bottom of the embankment. Could have been a whole lot worse. It's been a hectic morning. Scott, that's us done, mate. For Peter and Scott, it's left them with a strong sense of deja vu. Just under a year ago, another driver lost control of his vehicle and careered down a steep embankment at the same roundabout. But that time, it was a lamppost that saved the driver in his vehicle from ploughing across the A1. It's scary, isn't it? Because the same thing happened at the same junction, but on the opposite side of the carriageway. did, that's right. Yeah, the van went down, didn't it? Yeah. Very yeah. similar circumstances as well, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, uh, luckily, this time, no lamppost was knocked across two lanes of the carriageway, yeah. though. It's 
Still to come. Police are back to seize the runaway car. We're going to examine it in minutia to see if there's any reasons as to why this vehicle has come from way up there down onto the A1. And a horticultural horror. Oh, I hate traffic jams. When the giant veg growers hit a giant jam. Oh, it'll be a waste of a year. In 2016, as deaths on Britain's roads reached a five-year high, nearly 200 people were killed or seriously injured because a driver was distracted by their phone. On the A1 near Edinburgh, somebody using a mobile whilst driving has just been spotted by the evening patrol team. Traffic police Pete Marshall and Jack Nichols. We've driven past a 4x4, I think it was a Land Rover, in lane one. And I've looked across and uh, the person driving had a mobile phone in the hand, clearly up to the steering wheel, the screen lit up like a Christmas tree. It all happened while they were pulling off the A1, but driver Pete missed it. In Scotland, we need corroboration for offences. And I was looking the other and way. Peter's focusing, <laughs> Peter's focusing on his driving and he's not seen the offence. So they've come straight back on. We'll uh, head a few miles up the A1, see if we can locate the vehicle. I don't think we're going to find him. You'll call me. That's, could be. Could, he could have pulled off. He could have miles on us. Just as they're about to give up. In the motor, I've, got a maybe, maybe. I've got a feeling this is our. It is him, isn't it? He's all, over, uh, the road he's all over the road. They're pulling up alongside the driver who was using a phone. Still at it. Perfect. And the motorist has now been spotted doing it again, a few miles further down the A1. We've come across the same vehicle, and his manner of driving indicates straight away that he's not paying full attention. Oh, it could be a lady, sorry, I've not seen yet. Um, we've got alongside the mobile phone in the hand. It's just unbelievable. Hi there, if you just take a seat in the back for me, please. Take a seat in the back just behind me. What's wrong? Well, I'll, start, I'll explain to you when you get in the car. Right. Have you got your mobile phone on you? It seems the woman they've clearly seen using her mobile phone doesn't think it'll be good to talk. What's wrong? And after missing the offence at first, Pete was eagle-eyed the second time. Their screensaver, I believe, is uh, of an individual in a red coat, maybe. Just take a seat in the back for me, please. Hi there, how are you doing? What's your name? Nikita. Nikita? Yes. Right, Nikita. So, as you'll well be aware, I've looked across and seen you clearly on your phone. Oh, uh, wasn't, I was let, kind of, kind of, yes. OK, yes, let me finish, that's OK? That's fine, that's fine. Right, we've then continued at the A1, spotted your car. I know. And alongside, we can see that you're not quite holding your position in the lane. You've got a bit I'm close. I'm really sorry. So uh, then we've looked across again, both of us this time. Yes. And we've seen you with the phone up at the steering wheel. It's because the clock in the Land Rover doesn't work. OK. There's no light on it. OK, Nikita, and I, I Nikita. Find, and my phone doesn't work. Okay. I was trying to see the time. Nikita. And then the phone wouldn't open. Unfortunately, that's not really a valid excuse. That's not, I know, that's not an emergency. And if there's anything you needed to use your phone for as an I'm emergency, then, you sorry. pull over. Because I wasn't phoning or, or doing the anything. The thing is, I've well, been using that for a considerable I stretch of road on and off. Work. I thought okay. the time would come up because it, it, it wasn't working. Nikita's claim that she was trying to check the time doesn't tally with what Pete saw happen. We've seen you change from the, the front layout to the screensaver. Is it someone in a red jacket or something, is it? Yes. We've seen the screen change from that to the person in the no, red no, no, jacket okay, from okay, where okay. we're sitting. You, you do it. We are going... OK, okay Nikita, to my Nikita, to open we're, up. we're going in circles here because all of that's irrelevant. You know, the fact is you've been using a, a handheld mobile device whilst you've been driving a I motor vehicle, OK? The time. With the driver clearly feeling hard done by. If you could grab no, your driving no, no, no. licence for us. Pete and Jack know this job might not be resolved easily. Just keep an eye, keep an eye, keep an eye. Back with the veg van, two men and their marrow are heading for Worcestershire. They're 70 miles into their 250-mile journey to the Malvern Autumn Show. And Mark and Gary are desperate for a smooth ride down the A1. There's a guy we know. He was driving to a, a national show and he had to do an emergency stop on the way down there. Wiped what? the whole lot out on the way to a show. Horror stories from giant veg shows past 
are clearly panicking these two peas in a pod. I think we need to uh, pull over and check on the veg mark. Yeah, we'll pull into here, take a look at and see if everything's in one piece. I heard a bit of a bump there. No, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> The boys decide to check out the competition in this farm shop near Harrogate, just off the A1. Yeah, all the flowers are looking good. They've transported pretty well, so I'm happy with that. So far, so good. How are my onions looking? Yeah, Gary's onions are looking OK still. Everything's in one piece. The shop has definitely got the boys' seal of approval. Everything looks pretty good, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. See the leeks, they must be for over winter. Yeah. You couldn't suit them. Not that they'll find anything here that might bolster their championship chances. Giant marrows as well. Giant marrows. I think mine beats them. Yeah, <laughs> just a little bit. Hey, how are you doing? You all right? Good, how thanks. How are you? The Geordie boys think they've found giant veg growing potential in shop owners, Emma and Ben. Do you want to come and have a look at the veg? Yeah, yeah why not? Yeah, well. So it's time to bring out. The big gun. Oh my god, it's like a person. It's big, isn't it? <laughs> it's huge, makes us <laughs> look tiny. For Mark and Gary, it's back to the A1. Cheerio. See you later. With the word and their seeds successfully spread. So I think you can probably get the bug if we get a few seeds. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, customers will try. quite enjoy that as well, you know, like it'd be one of those things, isn't it? The big roadside marrow or something, you know, yeah. people come and come off the A1 for and yeah. Come, on, come and have a look. Here we go. Time to hit the A1. Yep, let's go down Britain's longest road. He's got a belly on him like his dad, haven't you, son? Do you always talk to him? I talk to him quite often. When he was a baby, I used to sing him songs when I'm in the allotment. Only when I'm on my own, though, because I look like a bit of a divvy. As well as the A1, Mark and Gary's eyes are on the prizes at the Malvern Autumn Show. What's your aims for this weekend? What are you aiming for? Just the place will do. I feel exactly the same. I'm hoping my onions do all right. But I think they will, you know. But, of course, one emergency stop could ruin their chances. Oh, 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 don't. That was a close one, Marvin. With a 6pm deadline for entering their veg, Gary's concerned about the A1's temporary speed limits. We've been driving through 50 mile an hour zones now, and I've never seen one person working yet. No wonder it takes three years to improve one stretch of road. And as they approach the final stage of their journey... The last 30 miles. ..they're about to be slowed down even more. I hate traffic jams. This is very concerning. I'm starting to stress. I can feel the vein in my head start to go doo -doo, doo -doo, doo -doo. <laughs> We'll be fine. No, you're not worried? Yeah. A little bit. A little bit? I'm trying to hide my nerves to make you OK. After all their hard work preparing for their biggest ever competition and just an hour to go before the deadline... <sighs> it would be a waste of a year if I get all the way down to the biggest giant bed show in the country and... We missed the cut-off time for having the vegetables in. It's no wonder that Mark and Gary aren't exactly cool as cucumbers. It's not just getting there at 6 o'clock, that's a cut-off time. Things have to be in before 6. These two set off this morning, hopeful of winning prizes. We are running very near. I'm now. starting to get a sweat on. But if they don't turn up on time to even enter their giant veg, they could be left feeling like prize turnips. We've only travelled. 300 yards here and maybe 15 minutes. We're not going to make this. In Tyne and Weir, <laughs> Highways England traffic officers Peter Senior and Scott Wilson are having to create a necessary traffic jam. We are just en route to put on a lane one and two closure for recovery of this vehicle. We've got police units uh, behind us with a rolling roadblock. With police holding up the A1 traffic, Peter and Scott are escorting the recovery truck to collect the wrecked car from the embankment. Because the car has to be lifted over the concrete barrier with a lorry-mounted crane, what we're going to have to do is close both lanes one and two in case the vehicle swings further over. We've 
trying to get this out as quick as we can so the police can release the traffic again. Um, this time of day, at least rush hour's finished. Still probably going to cause several miles of tailbacks. With the traffic now flowing past on the outside lane, the crane can get to work. It's a very careful manoeuvre. So the one-ton car doesn't swing out into the oncoming traffic. Sergeant Alan Keenleyside is here to oversee the secure removal of the car, because this is now a vital piece of evidence. We're going to speak to the driver later on today. We don't know if this driver is going to allege mechanical defect with this vehicle, so we're going to take this vehicle and we're going to examine it in minutia to see if there's any mechanical reasons as to why this vehicle has come from way up there down onto the A1. Tape's all secured, he's just taking his outriggers in. Just taking in our closure and that's it, the road's fully reopened. It's been a relentless morning. That's it, we're off. Cheers, Alan, see you later. And they've still got two hours of their shift left. So yeah, job well done, mate. It's been pretty busy, isn't it? I think it's time for breakfast, do you? Yeah, we'll have to have a look at the rest of our patch. We haven't barely been anywhere to do. We'll have tied up. Run up the patch and then breakfast. We'll compromise. <laughs> In the central reservation of the A1 in North Yorkshire, the barrier team are also refuelling. Now is a good time to get a bit of food, because more than likely when we start going, we won't be able to stop. And this is breakfast on the A1. Top level nutrition, this. Tuna fish and rice, and what do you want? But as you'd expect, team spirit stays solid. He's best on shovel, this guy. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> But when the new load of concrete arrives... We'll try this one now, see what it's like. That's it, yep. It's not too bad at all. It's down to business. And although the Romans built the original Great North Road, these barrier boys are making it fit for the 21st century. And they're all fully aware that their work on the A1 is vital. It's always a good feeling knowing that you've uh, made road safe. You know, families out here on road, you hear about all the accidents, especially on this A1, you know, it being a, quite a bad road. But, yeah, it is, it's, uh, it's a good feeling to know you've done your bit. Most motorists, especially, like, if you look at this, there's only two lanes running, and we always get grief, and we get hurled abuse because they think it's our fault when we're trying to make the road safer for them. But whilst the traffic isn't moving as quickly as normal, the team are motoring. At the moment, the concrete is the best we've had it all day. It's going in the same speed that it's coming out. So when it does that, the finish is very good and it hardly needs floating. But it doesn't happen like that all the time because you cannot get the slump consistently that good. But he's got it right at the end of the day, so I'll give him credit there. <laughs> With over 250 metres of concrete barrier laid today... I'm on. It's job done. That's it. That's where we stop. That's the end of the day. And the A1 is a safer place because of it. We've been to crash repairs where they've hit the wall, wagons of jackknife and not gone through, so it saved people's lives on the other side. So our job actually does work, and it's quite satisfying to know that. But I think everyone wants to get, get back to the digs and have a nice tea. And a few pints. I might even buy them a pint tonight, to be honest. They've done that hey, well. I like that. <laughs> but just the one, though. Just the one. I'll be back next round. Yeah. <laughs> Using a mobile phone whilst driving makes a crash around four times more likely. That's why drivers now face six penalty points and a £200 fine. Police Scotland officers Pete Marshall and Jack Nichols are dealing with a driver who's been spotted using her phone on two separate occasions, miles apart. You can see them, the man who's driving, though. Oh, Nearly coming yeah. into us when we're alongside. It's unbelievable. Yeah, no, it's all good. She claims she was only trying to check the time. 
and the seriousness of the situation is now dawning on her. I've never done it ever broke the law, and I didn't even it's, know I was breaking the law. It's, it's just a traffic, it's just a traffic ticket. Nobody here is saying you're a bad person. I had to get upset about this. It's, you know, it, it is no, a it's ticket. Not your fault. It is a ticket, but it's not you know, fault. we're here to. If you've been to I, some of the incidents that we've been to, because folk have been on their phones and the accidents yeah, they've no, caused, it's. it's, it's uh, fine. We got to a position where there was no car right in front of me, so I thought, well, nothing will hit me. I'll turn on the inside lane. I'll just get up to see the time. And the first time you came up to me. I saw you and I thought, oh, you shouldn't be on the phone. <laughs> because you, I thought you weren't allowed to make a phone call. And I thought, well, I'm not making a phone call. It doesn't matter. The next thing I know, you flashed me. And I thought, that's really peculiar. Because I had no idea you'd come back on the road. Yeah, I was sneaky like that, you see. Well, that's all right. <laughs> I didn't realise I couldn't just see the time. No, the, uh, the legislation is just using the mobile phones. As soon as you pick it up and start using the, the screen, that, that's it. That is using it, unfortunately. <laughs> Not knowing the law is no defence. So I totally admit to breaking the law. I didn't realise I was breaking the law otherwise. Yeah, it's, 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 just a, the, it's just a safety thing. I just wanted to see the time. Nikita also isn't aware of the new stiffer punishments. Oh well, unfortunately, it's, it's a £200 fine and it's six points to go on your licence. It might feel like a harsh penalty. I can't really afford to. But it reflects the huge dangers posed by using a mobile phone at the wheel. I mean, I didn't want to touch the phone or anything until I got on the motorway and it was relatively safe. Do you realise, though, that using your mobile phone at 50 miles an hour on the motorway is not safe? And there's one final phone message for her. Leave it in your bag and uh, should you need to use it, pull over somewhere safe, OK? You take care of yourself, OK? Pete and Jack have no doubt they've made the right call. You just can't use your mobile phone while driving. It's so, <laughs> it's, it's so dangerous, like... The fact we've got it twice... That's either an awfully big coincidence or they've been on the phone all the way down. Yeah. Obviously, she was a little bit upset by getting a ticket and six points, but it's steep for a reason. Issuing that lady a ticket stops her from doing it again and potentially stops her having a crash and hurting herself or someone else, then that's why we enforce it so strictly. Back with the Geordie giant veg growers. Oh, and they're cutting it fine. Top, yeah. Not that accident. Oh, you're kidding me. After miles of slow moving traffic, Mark and Gary are worried they're going to miss the deadline to enter the UK Championship in Malvern. Just getting a text message from the guys at Malvern saying, Where are you at? Really? Yeah. They're getting worried that we're not going to be able to make it. I said, We're about 10 minutes away. He said, Oh, no. With a van stuffed full of massive veg and prized flowers, Mark has to remain extra vigilant. I don't want to make any rash decisions and have to break hard. But didn't want to be wrecking everything last minute, even though we're pushing the time limits. With just minutes to go, they finally reach the showground after their 250-mile journey. Wow, it looks busy. This place is huge. Come on, there's five minutes left. It's the biggest competition of their lives. Move them over a bit. And as they enter their veg in the nick of time... 4.88. This is a sweet, the heaviest sweet. It's a bit tight, though. They realise the sheer size of the challenge. Do you want to lift? Yeah, well done, fellas. <laughs> nice one. I'd be very lucky if I get a place yet today, uh, looking at some of the stuff on the benches. My stuff just doesn't even compare, to be honest. It's quite disheartening, actually. Even though they've left the A1 behind, there are unexpected traffic problems in the flower tent. So somebody's just crashed the van into one of the exhibiting tables, so I'm moving all my stuff out of the way so it doesn't get damaged. An anxious Mark displays his dahlias. And they're in. Thank God for that. That's been a really long day. Yeah, it's down to the judges now. It's about time for a pint, I think. Yeah, I could do with a good pint now. Yeah. <laughs> the next morning, 
and it's a very early start for the judges of Giant Veg. Been growing is in the northeast as well. <laughs> and delicate flowers. They're very good, but the, the petals just twist a little bit. Yeah, they do. They? The standard Malvern is always very good. We're very lucky because we get exhibitors coming from all over the country. So that'll be that'll be first. I that'll think, be first. Yeah. Feeling as fresh as the veg after recovering from the long drive down the A1, Mark and Gary arrive. That's big. Yeah. It's double the size of yours, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, double. But there are no place cards for their cabbages, cucumbers or carrots. I'm happy with my carrot, though. Yeah, it is big, isn't it? Yeah. And Malvin the Marrow has been put in his place. <laughs> the cucumber's bigger than my marrow. <laughs> <laughs> but Gary's great white hope is his big onion. Got a place, Gary. It's an eye-watering result as it comes sixth. Well done. <laughs> Cheers, mate. And both Gary and Mark are placed in the heaviest three onions category. Where were yours? Sixth. And yours are fifth. Hey. So I've achieved what I wanted to do this year, which is travel to possibly the biggest giant vegetable show in the world at the moment. Yeah. And, uh, and I'm getting a place among some of the top growers. So is Mark, so I'm over the moon. The boys have impressed some of the show's seasoned giant veg growers. They don't have any good job. It takes some growing to grow an onion, and you've got to know what you're doing. The competition is just as fierce in the flower tent. The best show in the country. If you come here with a flower and you manage to get a prize, you've done absolutely marvellous. For Mark, it's the moment of truth. First. Oh, fantastic. First place. To get those flowers here, driving that far in that condition, it deserves a medal in itself doing yeah. that. And Mark's trip is getting better. It's another first. Oh, Mark. And better. Another one. Mark, absolutely outstanding. Three yeah. bars, three Cleaned firsts. Up, yeah. It makes it all worthwhile. The full year's worth of growing in to get cards at such a big event yeah. is, is fantastic. Mark, yeah. you totally deserve it. Yeah. I see what hard work you put into it. Every single day, chuck the bits for you. I really am. A long trip back up the A1 home. Geordie boys have proved the point, haven't we? Well worth it. Yeah. Good. Well done. Well done, mate. Mark and Gary set off down the A1 with big ambitions. And now they're heading back up north, full of beans. Everyone said that we're mad, travelling this far. With, Two, with 280 miles. 280 miles with the flowers in the back of the van to get to the show, but yeah. it's paid off, hasn't it? We'll be back next year. Bigger onions, bigger marrows, bigger than ever. The boys are hoping that next time their babies will be top of the crops. I'm definitely going to beat you this year with these giant onions, man. Look at that soil, they won't stand a chance. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> and the motorist who plummeted down the embankment made a full recovery. But after a police investigation discovered he had no shoes on, he was given a suspended jail sentence for dangerous driving.